This is steel, but it looks like brass. I have twin boys who love video games, but they have a very small game room. I decided to build them a media console out of a single sheet of plywood. I've also been dying to try a new technique called brass brushing. Keep watching to see how it turned out. I'm gonna start by telling you about the sponsor of today's project, Diablo Tools. That's because without their product, this project would have been a lot harder. And finding out that they have a new circular saw blade that cuts both wood and metal was the inspiration for the design of my media console. I've worked with metal a little in the past, but I've never used a cold saw or a non-abrasive blade to cut metal before. I wanted to see if one saw blade really could do both jobs, cut metal and wood. I cut eight six inch long lengths of quarter inch bar stock. Ever use a quick strip disc? I attached one to my angle grinder and it made quick work of removing all the mill scale from the raw steel. Next, I switched to a Diablo Steel Demon 80 grit flap disc to clean up the steel a little bit more and to give it more of a brushed finish. If this is the first time you've watched a pneumatic datic video, welcome! Make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you never miss a new project. Next, I marked the location of where I needed to drill holes on the steel legs. I applied a little bit of lubricant to help prevent my drill bits from wearing out quickly. Then I began the slow and tedious work of drilling all 32 holes by hand. I really need a drill press. Then I used a 3 8 inch drill bit to counterbore the top of the holes to accommodate a screw head. Once the steel leg parts were cut and drilled, it was time to give them a good wash to remove any residue. This is where the really fun part comes in, the brass brushing. Brass brushing basically is an easy way to brass plate steel. I had seen it done before on jewelry and I thought, hey, let's try it on furniture parts. I decided to pick up a solid brass wire wheel and I'm so glad I did. I'll leave the link to the product that I used in the description box. I'm definitely no blacksmith, but the research that I did showed me that brass brushing could happen between four and 800 degrees. So I figured instead of a forge, I could use my oven to achieve those temperatures. I placed the steel legs in a 500 degree oven and let them come up to temperature. I carefully pulled them out one at a time and quickly began to brush them with the wire wheel. As the steel would cool, I would heat it back up with a map gas torch. I was shocked to see that it actually worked. Brass was actually starting to plate the surface of the steel. After plating all eight pieces, I decided I think 500 degrees is a little too hot. It ended up coloring the steel more than I like. I turned my oven back down to 400 degrees and that worked much better. So while I was doing the brass brushing, it was kind of chaotic and busy trying to get it all done at once. So I didn't have a chance to explain a couple of the things that I learned. Like for example, temperature makes a big difference. So I don't know if you can see these two, let's catch the light just right. But this one I did on a lower temperature when the steel was just starting to become kind of straw colored. And this one got left in a little bit longer and the steel had already started to take on kind of a blue gray black cast and so the two next to each other this one is a bit brighter um, and shows off the brass better i mean this is a real pretty color but um, they're a little inconsistent so if i were to do it again i might do fewer at a time maybe only one or two um, pieces at a time in the oven and then pull them out and quickly brush them Once the leg pieces reached the brass color that I wanted, I let them cool and then sealed them with three coats of gloss lacquer. Next, it was time to jump into my comfort zone, the wood part of the build. Without changing my blade, I broke down the three quarter inch oak plywood into the project panel sizes I needed. Even after cutting through all that metal, the Diablo wood and metal blade had no trouble cutting through the oak. 
If you've watched one or two of my videos, you may have noticed I don't use a table saw. I would love one, but in the meantime, I have to make do. I decided I wanted to cut dados in the body of this media console to accommodate the shelves. Once the outside pieces were cut to size, I placed them next to each other to align where the dado locations would be. Then, using my circular saw and the same wooden metal blade, I made multiple passes, only cutting 3 eighths of an inch deep. I then used a chisel to clean up the recessed area. I then applied iron-on edge banding to all the exposed edges of the plywood. You liking what you see? Make sure to hit that like button. Like I mentioned in my rolling mirror cabinet video, I find it much easier to sand all the pieces before assembly. I used glue, clamps, and assembly squares to get the outside box pieces in place. I then pre-drilled and countersunk two and a half inch screws holding the top and bottom to the sides. To cover the screws, I plugged the holes with 3 8 inch oak dowels. I was pretty proud of myself. This is the first time I used a flush trim saw without gouging into the surface of the wood. Yay for me! The next morning when the outer box was dry, I started taking my measurement for the inner shelves. This would be a great time to let me know what you think about this video. Give it a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. I cut the plywood pieces to size and then I had to deal with the intersection area. I don't know if this joint would technically be considered a half lap, but basically I needed to cut half of one shelf and half of the other so they could sandwich together. Once again, I used my circular saw and the same blade. I cut three quarter inch wide grooves halfway through the width of the shelves. To square up the end of the notch, I drilled a half inch hole at the very end. I then switched to a jigsaw and squared it up. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I applied glue to the joint and then slid the shelf panels together. camera I checked to make sure that all the intersections were at 90 degrees. At this point I recruited my husband for an extra set of hands. It was a little tricky aligning all four dados and getting the shelf assembly slid into the box. Eventually we got the shelf slid all the way in. I applied clamps for pressure and allowed the console to dry overnight. Next, I began work on the base of the unit. I cut the aprons from 3 quarter inch by 1 and a half inch red oak to match the plywood. I used an assembly square for alignment and then attached the shorter apron pieces to each other using a brass leg on each end. I then placed the longer apron pieces between the end assemblies and clamped them together. I pre-drilled and countersunk through the outside pieces and attached everything together using glue and two and one half inch screws. Just like I did with the rest of the console, I plugged the holes with oak dowels and cut them flush. Once everything was dry, I wiped down the surface with a tack cloth and began to apply my finish. I originally planned on using a tannin accelerator. That's why I went with red oak, but unfortunately the quality of the plywood I used was not so great, so I ended up having to use a stain to hide some imperfections. I was still able to get that even gray color, but it just doesn't look quite as natural as the tannin reactor would have been. I removed the metal legs from the base and then sprayed all the wood parts with three coats of a water-based polyurethane. Using a water-based finish will prevent any yellowing of the cool gray color. The next day, I brought all the pieces inside to begin assembly. I flipped the box upside down and aligned the apron part of the base. I 
I pre-drilled and attached the base to the box using two inch screws. I then added the metal legs and the remaining apron pieces. I used brass screws to match the legs and I discovered you need to be a little more gentle than I'm used to. I stripped more than one screw head and said a few curse words. Once the base was assembled and attached, I could flip the console over. Perfect. Here's how it looks all done. What do you think? I'm absolutely in love with the brass finish on the legs. I can't believe I was able to do that myself. I have the console all styled pretty for photos, but don't worry, these shelves will be full of Xbox games and sticky fingerprints in no time. At least it should be strong enough to take whatever my boys throw at it. Literally. I'm always challenging myself with new techniques and ideas, so check out this video or maybe this one to get a few more ideas for yourself. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Pneumatic Datic channel. Thanks for watching guys.